Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Dean's 32 Gigabyte Game Station. This particular image does come with BIOSes and ROMs. You get PC Engine, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, very few Nintendo 64, Neo Geo Pocket Color, Neo Geo Pocket, MSX2, MSX, Main, Atari, Atari 2600, Kronos, which is a Cody build, an exit button, a track mode setup, Atari Lynx, TurboGrafx-16, Sega Mega Drive, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, Game Gear, Sega 32X, and back to PC Engine. Now this image will fit on a 32 gigabyte SD card. You do want to buy a high quality one like a SanDisk or a Lexar. The generic ones do not work. You just don't have enough space to fit this image on it. Now first thing, Nintendo 64. So the scroll menu on here is different. For example, right now I'm in Nintendo 64 and as I scroll down, I can go through the games. Something kind of cool about this is you get the game preview on the left and you get the box art on the right which you don't get on Ray's image, which is kind of cool. As far as the speed, as you can see, you know, I just went to another system, but going back to Nintendo 64 or going down to the next game, it's fairly smooth. It does take a couple moments for it to load, like this one is not loading its video. Gone on Legends, here's the test. Still does not work. So you have all the different systems with the robo spin, a track mode, and then you can go into any of the systems and search through the games using either up or down. And even when you hold down, you can do a fast scroll. You're also allowed to do jump letters and search if you configure that in a track mode. One of the first things you want to do when you get this image is go ahead and press the uh, tab button to get into your settings and all the controls on here were a little weird for my Xbox 360 controller. So you need to reconfigure all the controls by going in and removing the ones you don't want by clicking removing them. I have two here right now, I'm fine with that, but if I wanted to add another one, I'd go ahead and click add button, press the input I'm looking for. I just added G for an example, and then now G is on there. I'm going to go ahead and remove that though. You have to do that for all the settings in this attract mode. You also need to set up your controller initially in emulation station as well. When you first boot into this image, you'll notice that the controller isn't configured properly, and you have to scroll around the menu using you know the B and the Y button. What you want to do is go ahead and just plug in a USB keyboard and go ahead and click exit. Once you're in the command prompt, go ahead and type emulation station, and that should boot your Pi up into emulation station. Once you're in emulation station, go ahead and go into RetroPie, RetroPie setup. Configuration and tools is gonna to be the next one, C. Go ahead and do okay. And then you're gonna find at 808, emulation station dash emulation station front end used by RetroPie. Let's go ahead and go in there. Once we're in there, the, you'll see number one is clear reset emulation station input configuration. Go ahead and press OK. Are you sure you want this to wipe all controllers from the emulation and will prompt a re on the next start? They reset it. Okay, now let's go back. Back. Perform, re make sure you do perform reboot. If you just press escape here, you're going to get back into, a into uh, not a track mode, emulation station, and you're going to have none of your inputs working. So make sure you hit perform reboot and say yes. You might notice that this time when I loaded emulation station, it said one gamepad detected. Hold a button on your device to configure it. I hold it, it located the Xbox 360 controller. I'm gonna go ahead and configure it really quick. All right, I did it all first try. This okay button takes a second to load and now all my controls are working. This Xbox 360 controller is working great. Let's go ahead and just boot up a game, make sure our controls are working in the game. And you can already tell that on the yellow in the bottom left corner, it says it's configured. It was not configured before. 
All right, seems to be working great. And then before on the stock image, you couldn't do start select to exit the games. You had to press escape on the keyboard. So let's start start select. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and look through emulation station here because we see exactly how many ROMs are for each system. Sega 32X, 33 games. Super NES, 786 games. Atari 2600, 707 games. Atari 7800, 59 games. Atari Lynx, 76 games. No Dreamcast games, and I don't recommend installing it because it does not run that great on a Raspberry Pi. Final Burn Alpha, there's no games currently installed. Game Gear, 249 games. MAME arcade games, 1419. Sega Master System, 810. Sega Mega Drive, all the same games, another 810. MSX, it's not showing MSX2 here. Same thing happens with Ray's image, but 567 MSX games. Nintendo 64, only 12 games. Nintendo, 791. Neo Geo Pocket, 9. Neo Geo Pocket Color, 40. TurboGrafx, 16. 290 games. Also in Emulation Station, all the box art is already scraped, so it's already set up for you if you just want to run this image in Emulation Station, it's totally set up for you that way. We're now launching Kodi to see if it works. Let's go ahead and restart into a track mode and show you a game. So let's do a test to see if MSX2 works because on Ray's image it was not working. Let's see if the uh, was updated on this image. Okay, cool. So MSX2 does work. Alright, here we go. The D-pad is working just fine. Let's try your Raven PC engine. So in conclusion, if you want to save a little money from Ray's 128GB image, this does give you another option where the BIOSes and ROMs are already installed. This image does boot up by in default straight into a track mode. So if you want to go into Emulation Station, you do have to go to a track mode setup and reboot in Emulation Station. It does have Kodi along with most emulators from Atari all the way up to Nintendo 64. When you start getting into Nintendo 64, you're going to have very limited ROMs because you're loading all this on a 32 gigabyte SD card. When it comes to SD cards, please just buy the Sandus card. It's only a few dollars more than the cheap generic ones and it will work, or some of the other ones will not work. You will not have enough space on the disc for it to be able to write. Well, there's already a lot of default controls programmed in this image. I'm sure there's a reason for it. I particularly did not like how you had to navigate through this image and I had to remove a lot of the default controls and then re-adjust uh, them to what I wanted. 
Now, as far as the attract mode itself, I mean, props, it looks great. The startup menu is great. It scrolls pretty good. The menu system is pretty, it's not choppy. As you can see, it's fairly smooth. It's not pixelated. Everything loads up fairly quickly. You know, it's nothing noticeable. No gray screens. You have the box art. So there's a lot of good things going on here. It might be an option for you to check out. So that's my pros and cons. I mean, it's a great little 32 gigabyte image. Thank you for making this, Dean. It's really cool. It's a nice to see uh, different images coming up and giving you more options. If you could like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. You can see all the links in the description below. And I'll see you guys next time.